Hi everyone, in this part I'm gonna install automated sliding doors in Quadra. The doors will get opened and closed with the help of pressed air and it can be done remotely. To implement this project I need the following components. A pneumatic cylinder, which due to pressed air will move the rod, and the rod in its turn, attached to the door, will close or open it. The pneumatic cylinder attachment is very similar to the electric drive that previously stood on the door, so there will be no problem with installation. To control the pneumatic cylinder, we'll need a pneumatic valve, which due to the rod and electromagnetic valve, will supply air to one of the chambers of the pneumatic cylinder. We also need to provide the pressed air. For this purpose I'll use a filter dryer, it has a pressure regulator and air oiler, which contains some oil for lubricating the pneumatic cylinder and pneumatic valve. Also with the help of fittings and pneumatic pipelines I'll connect all the components. A throttle will be responsible for the speed of the pneumatic cylinder, but I'll tell about it a bit later. These components will allow creating an automatic control system for sliding doors. First I check the pneumatic valve by connecting its electromagnetic valve to the power supply. The clicking is present, but for some reason the rod doesn't move. Most likely the electromagnet doesn't move the rod itself but a small air valve, and the rod moves with the help of air in the system. Now I'm gonna check this by connecting the pneumatic valve to the compressor. After connecting through the one of the channels of the pneumatic valve, the air began to go out. At first I thought that it got blocked, but later after examination of the scheme, I found out that one channel is always open, and when the power is supplied, it closes, opening the second channel. I purchased it a couple of years ago and apparently bought the wrong one by mistake, since there are several configurations of these valves. Also this valve has a manual control with a button on its body. The hole through which the air comes out will be plugged up, since for my purpose I only need just one outlet. I screwed an elbow fitting for the first chamber to the pneumatic cylinder and put a filter silencer on the second chamber, cause it won't be used. I need a pneumatic cylinder only to close the door, the gas strut will still open it. To reduce the speed of the rod, I join a throttle with the airline, which works exactly like a regular tap, reducing the channel through which the air passes. Now we need to measure the draft of the pneumatic cylinder at an air pressure of 8 atmospheres. Almost 30 kilograms, this is close to the ratings. I also measured how many kilograms it takes to close the door. The result is a double margin. This means that the pneumatic cylinder has enough draft and it will easily close the door. Now all the mounts from the electric drive need to be removed onto the pneumatic cylinder. By the way, they are almost identical in size. It's a pity that the thread of the rod end didn't fit, that's why I had to change it with an elongated nut. It remains to let the Arian and check the operation. The pneumatic cylinder slightly doesn't press the door enough, but this moment is easily adjusted with a throttle. As a result, we've got a hybrid mechanism. The door is opened with a gas strut and the pneumatic cylinder closes it. By the way, the pneumatic cylinder doesn't prevent the manual opening of the door, which was one of my main requirements for the implementation of this project. Now we need to assemble the door control mechanism and it's desirable if it was remote. I decided to use the central lock to control the door mechanism. 
It also included a remote control, in the future its body can be stylized in cyberpunk style. The filling of the block is quite simple. The first is opening, the second is closing, the third is opening of the trunk, and the fourth is flashing of the tail lamps. I chose this central lock for a reason. It has a pneumatic lock mode. If you pull out this jumper, the power reaches the lock actuator for 3.5 seconds. Just in my case, the power will come to the pneumatic valve, and 3.5 seconds are enough to close the door. Everything works great. As a result we've got a fully featured remote automation. The only thing is that the gas strut cannot keep the door in the upper position and it rolls back a little. To make the gas strut hold the door, I increased its lever, moving it to another position. In order not to constantly increase the lever of the gas strut, I decided to install two-position pneumatic valve that will help the gas struts to push the door out. These throttles have one feature, they narrow the channel only in one direction and in the opposite direction they allow air to pass through freely. If it wasn't so, they'd be in conflict with each other. With their help we can configure different modes, for example the door opens slowly and closes quickly or vice versa. After pressing the button the new pneumatic valve remains open and leaves air in the pneumatic cylinder. I also connected the pneumatic valve to the central lock. While the door is still without glass and upholstering, the help of the pneumatic cylinder was excess, the door is pushed out of the opening too quickly even if the throttle is completely covered. The throttle, by the way, cannot be completely closed, it'll still let air through. As a result I decided to leave this valve, as I said earlier just in case. I'll plug one outlet and if I need help with lifting heavy door, I'll connect it back. Now to the side windows. I still want to make the side window go down, even if not completely as for example on the rear doors of sedan. To do this, I'll install a window lift in the door. But first we need to make glass. I measured the glass opening and ordered the side window in the same place where they made my windshield. It was made using the same triplex technology. They also gave this extra single glass which is needed by technology for manufacture. Since this is a consumable item, I'll use it to fit the opening. The inner upholstery will interfere with the glass, so we have to cut it off a bit. Basically, the glass stroke turned out to be sufficient, but there is one serious problem. Due to the fact that the glass turned out to be too convex, while lowering there appeared huge gaps on the sides. I'll try to cut the door later and now I'll proceed with installation of the window lift. I think it's better to do it at the back of the door so that it cannot interfere with the lever. For this purpose I re-welded the lower mount and made temporary adjustment using the studs. For the upper mount I welded two bent shaped tubes. Now the glass has something to abut on and we can try it on to the opening.
We need to make guide rails for the glass. There is special sealant for this, which will be placed in the shape too. The 20mm profile guide seemed narrow to me, so I replaced it with a shape tube of 25mm. I welded it to the frame in order it cannot interfere with the rear door lock. I also made a guide rail in the front part. I tried to lower the glass along the guides and it shattered. Good thing this is just a draft. The glass turned out to be too convex and while lowering it abuts with its central part on the door panel. Of course, you can cut the door right under the glass, but the cutout will reach till the rib, so what kind of seal will be suitable? In general, the glass needs to be reordered and the error turned out not to be cheap. I put the glass aside for now and installed those acrylic workpieces to check the operation of the window lift. The window lift works as it should and the glass lowers at a sufficient distance. This is quite enough. This time I decided to measure the glass using metal sheet. It'd be nice to use a straight glass, it's cheaper to make but then you have to change the shape of the opening or to extend the roof or to deepen the glass inside the cabin. As a test I'll cut off the side of the seal, it still needs to be redone for the new glass. From the side the straight panel looks good, but there appears a very ugly gap on the windscreen pillar. That means we still need to make a curved glass. I mean curved, not convex. The window lift turned out to be powerful and it even lifts a 2mm metal sheet. I also tried to open the door with a metal sheet instead of glass, but the gas strut can no longer cope with it. I connected the second circuit for the opening and readjusted the throttles. It's very convenient that the system is flexible and will work with almost any door weight. Next I set the glass and tried to open the door with it. When the opening seal is installed, the door will move much softer entering the opening and there will be no glass shaking. I was very pleased that the mechanism turned out to be reliable and works with no failures. The door always opens and closes. Another great advantage is that the door can always be opened manually and the automation doesn't stop this process. In the meantime, that's all I've got for now. Thanks everyone for your attention. If you liked the video, put your thumb up. See you in the next part.